Let's see. Let's do uh, Paladin next. So, right off the rip, we've got um, some pretty... We've got two legendaries, which we've got, I think that's more than we've seen re um, revealed for for anything else. Um, Crystal Smith Kangor is pretty interesting. Um, and then we've also got a legendary spell, which is Kangor's Endless Army. Um, I love Kangor's Endless Army. This is like your... Um, uh, your Kingslayer, uh, but for, for minions. So resurrect three friendly mechs. They keep any magnetic upgrades. That's pretty insane. Um, and then Crystal Smith Kangor is a pretty cheap legendary two, one, one, uh, two, one, two, um, divine shield, life steal, and your healing is doubled, uh, which is pretty nuts. So that probably means the, that the life steal implications from that, uh, are also doubled as well. So how do you feel about I like uh, that? I like, I like that card a lot. I like Crystal Smith Kangor a lot because um, I think it I think it implements a lot of the the buff cards mm -hmm. so much better. I thought I think it helps you utilize using those cards so much more. So um, it was a semi mid range control deck that Paladin had that that had uh, Lanessa Sunsorrow in it, where you would just over buff every card uh, beforehand with shit like uh, Blessing of Might, which gives them plus three attack, or Blessing of Kings, which gives them plus four, plus four, or Spike Ridge Steed, which gives them uh, plus two, plus six, and summons a two six at the end. And then they would drop uh, Lanessa Sun Sorrow later on in the game with all of those fucking buffs. Um, I think this could absolutely be fit well into that sort of a deck, where if you're instead of buffing like a silver hand recruit that's one one no uh no additional benefits to the card you are spending two mana to get a divine shield lifesteal increasing your healing times two doubled and then you just buff the shit out of that card yeah. and then that gives you say you get say you put a blessing of kings on that that gives you a two mana well it's essentially six mana um five six but you get 10 healing from it and it has divine shield which means you, unless they destroy it with a spell or like a removal card, like um, Voodoo Doll, you're not only just getting 10 healing, you're pretty much getting 20 healing, guaranteed. Or like Silence. But in that case, if they are to use Silence on Crystal Smith Kangor, they have to have more Silence for Lanessa Sansaro later on. Yep. I think the I like uh, that card a lot. yeah I, I really do um, I think that in general I think we're gonna see a um, a very strong showing from uh, Paladin in this expansion I think we're seeing some really interesting stuff and um, we're gonna see a lot more heal I, I I feel like we haven't seen a lot a lot of healing from uh, Paladin as um, outside of life stealing I mean I feel like healing has never been really the focus but uh, we're gonna see there's some yeah there's definitely some uh, lay on hands which is I think it's six mana heal eight. Yep. Uh, at that point, if you're spending eight mana, you play Crystal Smith Kangor. It's eight mana heal sixteen. Um, they have the Benevolent Jin, which heals a random minion or yourself three health. Yep. So with Crystal Smith, it's six. I mean, there's a lot. There's a, there's a decent amount that goes into it that uh, that can focus around healing for Paladin. And on top of that. Um, <clears throat> Glass Knight from the Witchwood expansion. Every yeah. time you heal, it refreshes Divine Shield. So that, I mean, there could definitely, there's definitely a possibility to have Kangor, Glass Knight, maybe even Lanessa Sunsorrow in a buff heal Paladin deck? That's, that's pretty, uh... That sounds, I mean, that sounds like a pretty realistic possibility. I mean, I, I think that we're... I think that we're like looking down the barrel of a um, a pretty annoying uh, paladin meta when we have like a lot of buffs, a lot of heals, and uh, they've already got kind of a, a solid little foundation, and this is going to capitalize on that. So I like that we're seeing paladin kind of um, do what it's already good at, but also kind of emphasize some old skills that haven't really been used uh, a whole lot. I think they're doing a good job of getting away from. Um even paladin right now which is just rampant on ladder yeah i think this is giving it more more of um variety 
for people to play other paladin type decks. Um, speaking of healing, uh, we'll just roll right into priest. Um, fuck Omega Medic. If you have ten uh, mana crystals, rest restore ten health to your hero. To your hero. Uh, that's good. That's really good. And then you have uh, you know cards like. Xerix cloning gallery summon a 1-1 one, one copy of each minion in your deck that's fucking nuts whoa that's nuts well you gotta hope you just gotta hope you have good minions in your deck that you didn't draw anything give me that, a 1-1 one, I mean, one, I... Lyra the Sun Shard uh, give me a 1-1 one, one, um, Prophet Velen actually Velen is a, is a battle cry um, there's a lot of good stuff in there there's a lot especially Dude, a 1-1... One, one... No, wait, no, Velen's, Velen's not a battle cry. Is he not? No. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Give me a 1-1. One, one, um, what's the... Uh, your spells cost one less? Is a Shimmering Elemental or something oh, like that? Um, Radiant Elemental. Radiant Elemental. Imagine you summon two of those, and then all of a sudden, you know, you drop down a another two-cost two, two cost card because you've got just free spells everywhere. I actually got smoked by a really good combo priest deck yesterday. Um, I was very upset. Actually, I, sh I shouldn't have been upset because the guy played it so fucking perfectly. But I was one turn away from killing him, and he he got the combo off, dude, and did 44 damage in one turn. It was fucking incredible. Oh, yeah. That is pretty incredible. Yeah. Um... Uh, he had six health left, and I was at, like, 28. And I, I, I already had full board control. I was playing my Recruit Hunter. <laughs> fucking smoked me <laughs> I don't know I think um, uh, discover a copy of a minion in your opponent's deck cloning device no that won't ever see play uh, dead ringer death rattle draw a death rattle minion from your deck maybe if that was a battle cry I think it would be a lot better battle cry draw a death rattle minion from your deck yeah because it happens immediately and it can't be like silenced or anything. I think that they were trying to push a big, put a big emphasis on Death Rattle Priest last expansion. Yep. With cards like Coffin Crasher and shit like that. Um, but like, Quest Priest already is, already does Death Rattle very efficiently as is. So I don't see that really making much sense. Omega Medic. 10 mana, restore 10. I guess that's okay. Yeah, we, I mean, we have a lot more strong, uh, pretty strong um, priest cards here. We've got a ton of mechs. Uh, we're, I think we're going to see a ton of mechs with priest. I mean, draw a death rattle minion. Um, you know, you could draw another dead, another dead ringer right there. Um, you know, but I'm, I think there's going to be a whole lot more. So, uh, and then we've got a lot more like kind of thought steal um, or like devour minds where it's like discover a copy of a minion in your opponent's deck. A lot more of that. So um, Priest is going to get back to its like old tricks where it's, uh, you know, using your own opponent's deck against them. And uh, I, I like that. I like that a lot. I don't think I don't think any of these cards are all that good. I like, you know, I like cloning device a, a, a lot. Um I love Xerix Cloning Gallery. I mean, that's that's not so different from like um, it's like Free from Amber, except it's one card. You know, you summon a, a eight cost card. Um, yeah, but you have to make sure that you don't draw your other minions beforehand. Yeah. If you have, say, for instance, for old um, uh, Big Priest, if you do giant minions, you just got screwed. Hmm. especially if you were playing against a more aggressive deck or an aggressive even a mid-range deck if you drew all of your heavy cards early and none of your like five uh or six mana spells were like recruit summoning them from your deck you essentially i mean you lost to right, any, right, right any fast-paced deck and th i think that's the same exact thing with cloning gallery i think if you draw any of those cards beforehand and you're just left with other cards in your deck. Like, say, for instance, you play Xerix Cloning Gallery, summon a 1-1 one, one copy of each minion in your deck. What if you only have um, the Radiant Elemental? Nine mana, get a 1-1, one, one, uh, reduce the cost of your spells by one. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a dead card. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, 
One thing I do like is Master Cloner, Zarek. Um, that reminds me of, like, Sherizen Corpse Flower uh, from Ungoro. That was one of my favorite rogue cards. If you've cast any spells on this minion, resummon it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that a quick silence would take care of that, but... Um, it's still an interesting, uh, still an interesting condition. I mean, I think six is way too much. If this was like a yeah. four, like a four mana, two four. five or four five, yeah. or like a five, five mana five. four five, um, I think that would get a, get a lot more value. But uh, at six, six is a lot for that, um, especially if you th- have to throw down a spell on it. If it was like, if you use your hero power on this minion, resummon it or something like that, I can see that maybe justifying the cost a little bit more. But uh, I mean, I like it. I, I really like that effect. I like the death rattle. Um, but eh, I don't. Know. I think Glass Knight does all of that. Yeah, but it's just a paladin legendary. Right. <laughs> you know, right. I think Glass Knight does all of that. I mean, it's technically not a death rattle. You're not resummoning it, but you're getting Divine Shield, which is essentially just as good. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I don't like any of these priest cards, honestly. I don't think any of them are any good. And it's that's sad, too, because priest is in a pretty shitty spot right now. Yeah. There's not many good priest decks. As someone who's right been now. absolutely fucking steamrolled by dragon priests for, like, years, I don't feel yeah. bad. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know... I, I, I bet that they do need some love, but, like, priests have had their day for a very long time. So, yeah, um, you know, I, I guess yeah. they'll have no, to you're wait. 100- <laughs> you're 100% correct. Priests <laughs> dominated, what, the past two metas, essentially? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and then now it's the meta of pretty much Warlock and Paladin. Well, it was Paladin to start. It's all It's been Warlock for a while. Yep. But, yeah, Priest had its limelight for a good amount of time. Uh, so, Rogue has some weird fucking cards. Um, oh, I love some of the Rogue cards. I really like them. Um, Rogue is my favorite class to play, so I've been really excited to take a look at these. Um, Academic Espionage, shuffle 10 cards from your opponent's class into your deck. They cost one. I fucking love that. That is a fucking, oh, that, that is like a, that is like a swashburglar on steroids. Um, I absolutely love that. And, uh, let's see, we've got, uh, Myra's Unstable Element, which is draw the rest of your deck. Yes. Which is just, like, fucking, wow. I don't know how that card's ever gonna see play. I I mean, like, there's so many ways for Rogue to refill their deck, but if you're drawing your entire deck you have to have some form of combo involved with it to make sure you just don't die from fatigue this is the first mill rogue deck where you just mill yourself yeah self mill rogue (laughs) um i'm sure someone will figure out how to use that card yeah i mean i i I have this weird um thought of like i mean because you've got you know academic espionage and then you've got lab recruiter which are both involved with like getting um cards shuffled back into your deck and then myra's unstable element draw the rest of your deck um I, there's something there there's something that like we're missing there especially oh. yeah i i i, I well, like you're overlooking you're overlooking the best card that you're staring at right now Paul, we're gonna play we're, we're gonna play what card is bob talking about <laughs> what uh, card do you think that we're looking at right now? Do you think I think will be the best card in the Rogue class once this expansion releases? Um, Light Nozzle a Crawler. Literal, a, a literal deck-defining card. Pogo Hopper. Yes. Yeah, Pogo Hopper. Especially I if you look at you. Lab Recruiter, too. Yeah. Yep. I guarantee you, I have so many ideas in my head right now to make a specifically... Pogo Hopper deck. Yeah. Pogo Hopper ho- Hopper Rogue deck. You put in two... Po- so let, let's explain it. Pogo Hopper, Battlecry, gain plus two, plus two for each other Pogo Hopper you played this game. Two mana, one, one, right? Mm-hmm. So you play this on turn two, it's, it's bad for the start because it's just a one, one. But then the next one you play, you play a two mana, three, three. That's not terrible. No. If you have other ways of playing more Pogo Hoppers... 
say by bouncing cards like um uh youthful brewmaster uh or uh shadow gadget Snap. uh gadgets and ferryman yep gadgets and very ferryman then you have lab recruiter that shuffles three more into your deck if you turn five play one pogo hopper shadow step it twice that's now a two mana five five yep right and then say you draw your next pogo hopper it's a two mana seven seven yep this is just jade druid put into rogue with a cute bunny mech yeah and it's gonna i guarantee you this deck will be the bane of some people's existence i think this is gonna see value in like quest rogue decks too and i kind of wish that Maybe. i didn't i wish that i didn't dust my caverns below uh because quest rogue was uh club my quest rogue rogue want run before it got nerfed was like my hottest run ever and yeah. uh i dusted it when it got nerfed and uh you know it's still seeing some great play but uh, Pogo Hopper is probably going to see some value there too, especially when you focus on bouncing cards back and forth. So I think we're going to see a, a lot more Quest Rogue. Uh, maybe Blizzard feels bad about nerfing that into the ground, but uh, I think we're going to see a little see, bit more. The thing, is, the thing is, I don't even think you need to run Quest with this. I think no. you just solely have a Pogo Hopper deck where you run two of these, two Lab Recruiters, Zola the Gorgon, two Baleful Bankers, and shit like that. So at that point, you have... Two pogo hoppers. Uh, you shuffle th six more into your deck. You have eight pogo hoppers with two cards, right? Zola the Gorgon. That's three cards. You have nine. If you play uh, two baleful bankers, that's five eleven pogo hoppers. Yep. If you can play all eleven pogo hoppers, that's uh, twenty-two plus. That's twenty-three twenty-three. You have a board filled with that, and they all cost two mana. That's that just screams the next Jade deck to me, and Jade Jade uh, Druid was huge. So I think I I will, I promise you right now, I will make a deck based around Pogo Hopper. Yeah. Guaranteed it. Yeah, I liked I like what I, I'm seeing from Rogue a lot. I anticipate this being a tier one deck. Yeah, I and agree. like not even fucking around just because it's like a cute bunny mech. I think this has so much potential to be an oppressive deck. Yeah. Like a, a very oppressive deck, if you can play it off. The only issue you might run into is if you play against super aggressive deck. Like a decks that can like decks that can kill you by turn six. Yeah. Or uh silences are, I think are pretty big too with this. Actually it doesn't matter. The silence wouldn't matter. Exactly, it doesn't matter. The silence wouldn't matter. That is actually really I have, interesting. I have so many cards that I pretty much have all of the cards that you need for this. I might be missing one baleful banker, but like I can craft it. But, like, I can 100% see myself making a deck based around this. And then you throw in cards, like, um, where you want to, like, cycle through your deck. You, uh, Faldori Strider, which is, like, the best four man, the four cost card in Rogue right now. Yep. Where it shuffles three, four, fours. If you play two more of those, and then you run two sprints, where it's draw four cards, you're drawing everything you need to. And then all you have is a full board with either four fours or, uh, uh, exponentially growing pogo hoppers. Spread that sounds pretty. That sounds like it could get pretty fucking legit pretty fast. Yeah, I, there's so much that can go into yeah. this, and then there's so many other cards in Rogue that allow you to uh, to draw more minions. Like, uh, what's the singer from Witchwood or not Witchwood? Uh, Cobalt. It's uh, the Bard. Uh, yeah. Um. I'm like I can literally picture oh, no, it and I can El hear it. Um, no, no, it's Elven Minstrel. Yeah, Elven Minstrel. That's the one. Yeah, I, I, I'm seeing it right now. Um, yeah, and it's a uh, it's a combo and it's draw two uh, or recruit two uh, minions from your deck or something like that. And you mentioned Sherizan, my favorite rogue cards right now. Yeah, Sherizan. So if you have, good. dude, if you have all of these low cost cards. You just auto. You pretty much trigger Sherazan if you need to later on in the game. So that's just another. What is he? A five mana four five. Yep. Yeah. So after playing X amount of cards at like turn eight, you your Sherazan comes back. You have maybe three Pogo Hoppers on on board. You're good. It's pretty fucking legit. Uh, 